What's with the background? Much better. You know, if you need to make a spoken presentation on video, it can help to replace your background with something gently moving to keep the viewers interested. This sort of thing is called motion graphics. And if you look them up online, you'll find whole libraries of the stuff, really fancy ones, and they can kind of be expensive. But really, it's just a simple video, something moving that loops at the end so you can stretch it out as long as you want or cut it as short as you want. And I'm going to show you how you can make your own from scratch using free software. Let's jump on the computer and do that. Our adventure starts in Paint.net, a free painting software that's considerably better than Microsoft Paint. Make a nice big square to work with, like about 2,000 by 2,000 pixels. Great. Start by drawing some lines, but keep it simple. I like to pick all of my colors from the same quadrant of the color wheel with just one from the opposite side as a highlight. Now save your image as a PNG. Now our adventure moves over to hit film. Create a new project, one minute long, 1080p is fine. Then take your image and drop it into the hit film media tab. And then from there, drop it onto the timeline. Stretch it out to be the full one minute length and hit film extends the editor window timeline, which is fine, it's no problem. Right mouse click on the image and convert it to a composite shot. Now we're in the compositing window, which is kind of like a mini enclosed editing timeline, but it's also different. It's easier to see the keyframes in this mode. We're gonna start by adding some effects to give this image motion. The distort folder is a great source of effects for this. Add a bulge effect, crank up the radius and set a wrap on there. Then we're going to animate the bulge factor. We're going to start at negative 10 and end at negative 10. And then at about the 30 second mark, we're going to go to negative five. Yeah, we got some motion now and that's looking really good. Let's layer a twirl effect on top of that and animate the twirl setting to go from 90 at the start and 90 at the end, and then negative 90 in the middle. Yeah, that's looking twirly. Okay, let's switch back to the editor and notice how our composite shot has all those animations we did to it, but it's now cropped to fit the screen. So that means that we have some space to move it around and that's exactly what we're going to do. First, let's scale it to 150 and animate a rotation to go from zero at the beginning to one at the end. Yeah, that's fun. Now let's animate the position. The start and end should be in the same place and about as low on the screen as you can go. At about 30 second mark, move it as high on the screen as it will go. At 15 seconds, move it to the left and at 45 seconds, move it to the right. Then scrub back and forth on the timeline, looking for places where the image does not cover the entire field of view. And when you find them, don't adjust it directly. Instead, go back to the nodes and handles of those keyframes, which you can see in the view there, and adjust them so that the trajectory doesn't fall off the edges. And when you're all done, we've got a really cool little animation. But in order to make a perfect loop, we gotta get rid of either the first or the last frame. So jump to the last frame, take a step back one frame and cut that frame off. And that's perfect. Export your looped animation and you're good to go. And of course, when you use this animation, you can even layer additional effects on top of it to give it your own unique look and feel. But this technique can be applied to all kinds of different animations and just a familiarity with the tools will open up new possibilities for you. So I hope that this has inspired you to make something cool and I look forward to seeing what you're gonna do with it.